Hi there guys, Mike Brown here. It's been a little bit of a while since I've seen you last. I'd like to welcome you to our brand new London store. As you can see, we've got this gorgeous new space. All of our saxophones and mouthpieces, mute systems, reeds, all those different bits and pieces are out, ready for you guys to test. And we're just on the south bank of uh, the River Thames. So just behind the Oxo Tower on Stamford Street, guys. I'd really encourage you to stop in and have a little experience of our new space and try out some kit. So, what video am I doing for you today? I've got a bit of an interesting one, particularly for myself, as this is my area of expertise. So, we're checking out what's gonna be your first jazz mouthpiece. Now, this is really aimed at people who've been playing a little bit of time, have got to grips with the saxophone, and are starting to explore the idiom of jazz. The great thing about this is there's a range of mouthpieces out there that are going to work really well for you. They're not going to break the bank and they're going to encourage you to build up what we call your own chops and your own personal sound on the instrument. The thing about jazz is we want dexterity and virtuosity combined with fluidity. So they're almost two contradicting ends of the spectrum. So it's not the easiest thing to get to grips with, guys. All of the mouthpieces that I'm gonna show you today are based on what we call a rollover baffle, okay? So what happens there is there's a little scoop out of the slope of the mouthpiece, and that encourages the air to speed up a little bit and gives you a bit of projection. The first one that I'm gonna start with is the absolute go-to standard starting jazz mouthpiece. It's this Otto Link. This is the Autolink Tone Edge. It's based uh, made out of hard rubber or ebonite. And what you're gonna find is it gives you a lovely kind of textured 60s to 70s kind of sound. I'm gonna play a little bit of a exercise that was shown to me by the great Jean Toussaint, an old Art Blakey saxophonist. It's actually a little bit updated by myself. And then I'm going to play um, a, through a little bit of St. Thomas for you guys. Hopefully you can hear the differences between the mouthpieces. So this first one here is an Otto Link. <laughs> really enjoy the Otto links. what you'll find is they give you a nice textured sound that sits slightly on the darker side of the spectrum. What you will find is that people prefer or kind of top end players are searching for the older Otto links. and the reason if I'm honest with you is the finishing is a little bit more consistent. With the modern Otto links, make sure you play a couple because some will be slightly lighter and some will be slightly darker. It's important to find the one that works for you. The next piece I'm going to show you guys is going to head away from that darker side of the spectrum and definitely put us onto the brighter end of it. Okay, It's a little bit more free-blowing, it's got much more projection, i.e. it can go a bit louder. Okay, And as you can see here, it's got a lovely marbled sandstone finish. This is the, the Dario Select Jazz. It's a fantastic little mouthpiece, really affordable, and the other great thing about it is all of the internal dimensions are completely CNC finished. What that means is there's no human touch involved in completing the internals of the mouthpiece. That means each one plays exactly the same. I've played on over 20 of these pieces now, guys, and every single one is identical. So what you can do is if you break one, buy another straight off the internet, and as long as it's the same tip opening, it's gonna play exactly the same for you. Let's have a little play on it and see what you think. Thank <laughs> you. 
As you can hear guys, it's definitely much brighter and puts you more in a kind of contemporary sounding area. It's a little bit more focused as well, so that kind of texture you get at the edge of the auto link, you're not going to find with this. I actually love these mouthpieces, they're a little bit bright for my personal taste, but they perform amazingly. I find very few mouthpieces out there on the modern market play as easily as the Daddario. I'd really recommend checking it out. The third mouthpiece I've got for you today, guys, is the Van Dorn V16. I've actually owned one of these mouthpieces for a number of years. I'm really comfortable on it, um, and as such, I'm a little bit biased. However, they play really well. They're on a brighter side of the spectrum, but not as cutting as the Daddario, and you're gonna find they produce more body, closer to the Otto length than the Daddario, okay? They play really, really effortlessly, um, but what you will find is the facing is quite long on them. So your tuning band, the ability to bend notes, is a little bit larger on this than it is, for example, on the Daddario. So let's show you what I mean. <laughs> So, I really like the V16, guys. I don't know whether you can tell that. It's a great mouthpiece. It generates a little bit more body than the Daddario. So in my mind, it works a little bit better in kind of the more classic hard bop settings, okay? If you're playing slightly more contemporary music, it can certainly do that. You're just gonna have to kick a little bit more air through it, okay, guys? So, let's move on to our fourth mouthpiece. The fourth mouthpiece I've got for you today, guys, is from a slightly smaller producer. So this comes from Jody Jazz. Jody Espino creates some fantastic mouthpieces, okay? And this one here, his hard rubber, is actually based on an Otto link. What you're gonna find, though, is it's gonna generate more texture, that sound at the edges, okay? And it's also gonna be definitely a little bit darker than the standard auto link tonage. So we're starting to move over into the darker side of the spectrum. Now this is where I personally am more comfortable, but please don't let that color your choice of mouthpiece, guys. It's really important to pick one that works for you and with the sound that you have in your head. So let's have a little play on this. Again, it's a rollover baffle piece and it's got a medium chamber. So let's see what you think. Thank you. 
really nice mouthpieces, guys. They're quite free-blowing, but you still get that texture at the edges. So I'm hoping that you could have heard the difference there. It's got quite a similar core to the Autolink. Again, it's that texture at the edges. So if you're looking for really textured pieces, definitely check out the Jody Jazz Hard Rubber. So the final mouthpiece that I have to show you guys is another Van Doren. In fact, it's another V16. This, however, is one of their really new models. So it's actually only been in our store here in London for a couple of days. I really like it though. Everything about it is exactly the same as the other V16, except for the chamber size. So our other V16 had a medium chamber. What that means is the air flows through it nice and comfortably. This one here has a large chamber. So if we open out the chamber of a mouthpiece, the air is gonna run through it more slowly. You're gonna feel that as a little bit more resistance and what it's gonna do to the sound is if the air is traveling more slowly, you're gonna get a darker sound. I'm really excited about this piece. I haven't played on it that much yet, but I really like the way it performs and I definitely like the fact that it's darker than the standard Van Doren V16. It's worth bearing in mind that they also offer metal versions of these in medium and large chambers as well. So let's have a play and see what you think. So, you have to forgive me for putting St. Thomas through all 12 keys there at the end. I'm sure Sonny Rollins would probably not be too happy with that, but you can see how excited by this mouthpiece I am. As you can hear, it's definitely dark like the Jody Jazz Hard Rubber, but it doesn't have that textured edge to it. It's much more centered. It plays really well. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that all of these mouthpieces that I've played here today are round about a seven star tip opening. The reason I've gone down that route is it's the most comfortable for most players out there. I'm playing quite a heavy setup, but make sure you go with the reeds that you're comfortable with as well, guys. Play through the mouthpieces, play similar things on the mouthpieces so that you get a good benchmark, and make sure you go for something that A, you can perform well on, and B, helps you achieve the voice that you're looking for when you start exploring jazz. I hope you found this video really helpful and I really want to encourage you guys to stop into our new London store. It's a gorgeous space and if you really want to, you can pop out for lunch on the South Bank, which is always a bonus. Hope to see you soon.